Barsboldia, the cow of Path of Titans, one of the biggest herbivores in the game. And ah, uh, let's forget about that. We all know what we came here for. Let's just hop into it. Barsboldia, like many other creatures, are at a stage where they are about to get new abilities. So whatever I may say now, that might change in the future, but that only means more content for me. For now, let's focus on the current state for Barsbolia. As you can see, the arsenal will be quite vast in the future, but for now, for head abilities we have a headbutt, an attack that can be used while running and cause knockback. Some slots don't have abilities yet, like sensors or front limb. And Hyde only have one option, which is pretty much the bleed and venom healing by 30%. Who knows, maybe we'll get another one in the future. No abilities on legs or back limb, but for tail, we have two. A normal tail attack, and another tail attack that slams to the ground and causes high damage. We can equip both, and who knows, maybe we'll get another variation in the future. The call abilities... As you can see, we have two slots for them, so we'll definitely get more in the future. The existing call increases your defense, and for every party member in your group. Again, we don't really have that many options for Arsenal, but we'll probably get more abilities in the future. We'll just have to wait and see. Your fight usually consists of 1v1 or 1v2, but that is only the case if it's a revolve around Apexes. If you fight mid tiers, then you can expect them to come at you as a pack. If you don't want to be attacked by a pack, then I just suggest you team up with other Barsboldia. Also, in what terrain you should fight in, I will come back to that later. It kind of depends on how you want to fight your fights. In any case, if you do find yourself in a 1v1 with another Apex, then here's what you can do. Let's say you fight someone who has a damage increase call, in which case, you should answer those calls with your own call. Their call increases attack, yours increases defense. In a roundabout way, you can say they cancel each other out. You should wait until they activate their call and then you should activate yours. The duration of the calls are usually around 1 minute, so when yours run out, you can assume that their have also run out. Of course, that doesn't mean you should face tank your opponent. Usually, you have a bit more speed than your opponent, so doing hits and run are the best strategy, especially if you're facing apexes that can bone break. I'm not saying you can face tank your enemy, it's just not what I would do. And if you do, don't be an idiot and face tank with your head. The most damage output comes from your tail attack, so at least uh, face tank with your tails facing the enemy. If you're gonna do like me and run and hit, then I use a strategy which I like to call Drive-By Smackdown, which usually just means run, headbutt, face away and smack. Of course, right after you need to create some distance, but that shouldn't prove too challenging. While the Tail Slam is the one causing most damage, it does use stamina, in which case it is best to start using the normal Tail which doesn't use stamina at all, though smaller damage. Usually this only happens at the end of the fight, so it's only a question about who is lowest. Also, I haven't mentioned this in previous video due to it being a fact I didn't know, but crouching helps regenerating stamina a bit faster, at least it feels like it. So if you're low on stamina, get some distance, start crouching, and then you can finish the fight unless they give up. It's not always about killing your opponents. If you're going up against semi-aquatics, then at the very least, try to keep the battle to land. Don't fight them near the water, or in the water for that matter. If you do fight near the water, then they'll just run away once they get low. They'll heal in the water, and then they'll come back for more. At least try to get them away from water. While it's okay to use headbutt attack, it is better to let the tail do the brawling. If the opponent do manages to escape, it is better to leave the area. A prolonged battle won't do you any good. While you still may win majority of the apex battle, 
don't let that go to your head. Don't underestimate the other Apexes. At least, don't be dumb and fight 1v2. A battle against two Apexes is a battle you most definitely will lose. Personally, I find getting attacked by a pack of mid-tiers more stressful than getting attacked by a solo Apex. The outcome of such battles depends on how many attackers there are and what you choose to do in such battles. When you get attacked, it is normal to think that you need to get to a place where they can't attack you from every direction, and that is not a bad strategy. Also, if there's only two attackers, then it should be manageable. I suggest taking a defensive stand. Don't waste stamina running around. Save your stamina for your attacks. However, if there's three attackers, then it is when you should really start to worry. Two can be manageable, but with three, then you start getting overwhelmed. It is difficult to keep an eye on all three targets. The same way you don't expect to win a battle against two Apexes, you kinda have to have the same expectation when you get attacked by too many mid-tiers. The terrain you should go for kinda doesn't matter, not when your attacks works in every direction, you just need to move accordingly to your opponents. However, there is one strategy with the terrain that you can use that might guarantee your survival. However, it kind of feels dirty using it, so unless you don't really care about honor and just want to survive, then here's what you do. Remember what I said about the headbutt attack? It also does knockback. Which means if you take the high ground, and I mean like really, really high ground, then you can inflict fall damage onto your opponents, which will either kill them, or damage them severely, where they are easy to kill or just have to call off the hunt. Let's take a look. This strat does force you to stay near a cliffside, but if you see opponents which you feel like you can't beat on an open field, just see if they are foolish enough to follow you. If the opponents are smart, they will understand that this is a lost cause. If the opponents have knockback ability of their own, you just have to make sure that they don't get the chance to knock you off. Stay close by the cliffside and just headbutt them. At the time of this recording, there's only a handful of creatures who has knockback abilities, so you don't need to worry about them too much. So to sum it up, against 1v1, Activate your call when they are activating theirs, and do hit and run, and don't worry if they hit your tail, it will be minimum damage, cause it's the tail. Also, the hitbox on tail are immune against bone break, so if your enemy does bone break, you rather want them to hit your tail rather than your body. I'm not too sure about the bleed, but try to avoid it anyways. If you're going to do a head-to-head -head brawling, it is best to let the tail do the damage. And if there's two Apexes, it's better to run away. And if you're going up against mid tiers, either get your back against the wall or hope there aren't too many. And if there are, throw away armor and get yourself on the high ground, Anakin. Before I end this video, I just want to say I saw some of the reaction from the last week combat guide and I just want to say that you are all 